if I'm doing, you know, with endurance work, but in zone five, let's say I'm doing one minute on one minute off, one minute on one minute off. And I do that for 25 minutes. That would be more like that, that threshold work that, that Inger Britson does on his off days on his other days. But then I go b- get in the sauna for that 30 minutes. Is that considered, yeah, am I getting the volume here and the respiration here? And I think that that's something that it's Come a on, uni- science. Let us know. Yeah, it would be a unique study that that could be. The other thing with a sauna is that it doesn't beat you up. Like you're not right. You're not taking joint pressure or, you know, or you're not handling ground reaction forces that you yeah. are when you're on on the road, no. or the track. It's so intriguing. I was just was curious about that. You know, all the fun stuff, all the good stuff. I remember on my visit to Kent State, they had a lot of black squirrels. Cool. I yeah. was like, that's neat. I feel like oh. we, should, we should start this podcast All right. with my joke. Which jo- My drug, my drug oh, joke. You tell it, Dane. Tell your joke. So we'll start off. It's not the, your joke. It's, it's, a, it's a, a joke that I'm... You're fond of. Very fond of. My favorite joke is... Well, probably not my favorite one. Bill Hicks has one about marketers that I love. Uh, my, but this is one of my favorite jokes is I used to do drugs. And like everybody's like, yeah, like yeah. I used to do drugs. I still, I I still do drugs, but I used to do them too. <laughs> 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 and everybody's like, wait a second, <laughs> you got me on that one. Yeah, it's, it's so funny. <laughs> yeah. The sad part is, is like he was doing hard drugs. What's silly too, like ta- heroin. Yeah, you're talking about comedians, right? Yeah. We didn't even. We went and saw. Bill, uh, Bill Burr. Dude, what's crazy? When and I just got home last night, I was literally pulling into my driveway going, I saw Bill Burr, got home at like 1230, yeah. left at 550, and that was the last time I was home. Dude, that's how long I've been gone. Yeah, that, that's a bit. Yeah, it's a while. What was that? The, that was, that like was the June day- 23rd. Third? And it was, it was the yeah. day that the the submarine like they officially yeah like it, like it came out up. where like the submarine is gone yeah that was the day that they announced it and bill burr had a 10 minute stick on how stupid yeah. these people were he had the <laughs> joke about it them. stupid white people and then he was like oh I feel like we did have a little rise in the the white population though, because there was two brown people on the on the boat. <laughs> yeah, <he> was, <laughs> jokes were funny. Yeah, uh, we're gonna talk about cardio. I think today. My, my and, you know, it's funny and being a, scared of cardio well, training. I, I'm sad right now. This is I didn't do cardio yesterday, and I I'm not sure if I'm. Gonna you having my, like withdrawal from n- no cardio? Yeah. So yesterday I had cardio a, withdrawal. I had a plan Stick that with I was, the drug reference. This yeah, thing. cardio withdrawal. <laughs> I, I I was. I wanted to, so I no wanted to surprise. High. Yeah, well, I wanted to surprise Jason, and I had planned in the. I have an American American Express credit card, so I can get into this lounge at these in specific airports. They have lounges, and they have one in Dallas. So I was like, "Oh man, I've got my Osmo. I want to go on a run through the Dallas airport." And I I had planned this that I didn't want to tell him because I actually just wanted to film like a full vlog of me running like five miles in the Dallas airport. Cause the airport is huge. It's huge. And then I, I was like, well, maybe I should Google like, are you allowed to do this? Are you allowed to? Ru-? Yeah. And so I had actually scheduled to get a shower in the lounge. Um, you can schedule ahead. And then as I was sitting in the lounge, I'm like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna look and see, like I I'd asked, to put my bag somewhere and they weren't fond of it, but they were like, yeah, that's okay. If you can come back. And then I looked it up and it was like, there's very specific places that you, you cannot go for runs. And they were like, you might be able to run in certain parts of airports, but oftentimes like based off the runners forums, it can result in, uh, you essentially being removed by a security (laughs) guard because it's like a threat. Yeah. Should only be running to catch a flight that you're late for. Yeah. Because your connecting flight got in late. Yeah. And then I was reading, like, some guys were like, well, I've done it. I've worn, like, orange stuff, and I've had my hands free. And then I was like, well, if I'm running and I'm filming with, like, a black yeah, camera, I, I don't want to risk it. So I didn't do you, it. You were shooting? 
with the camera. Correct. That's where I was like, <laughs> this is clearly something I would need to get approved by. I wish the everyone could have seen Jason's face when I made that <laughs> silly pun. <Yeah. laughs> it was just like so eye roll. Yeah. yeah. It's like, <laughs> All right, let's talk about cardio. Imagine being sick and tired of walking up the steps and breathing heavy. You see a set of steps and always decide on the elevator. And doing sets of five plus reps feel like an eternity. You don't want this type of life. There was a time when you <laughs> sprinted around the track like a gazelle, across the court for hours or on a field for distances nearing 10K. Heck, you recall a time when you rode a bike all day, every day, everywhere you went. Yeah, when you're 12. Yeah. You want that back. Dane, let's talk about cardiovascular training. And let's zero in on some difficult yet rewarding cardio training. Uh, I think one of the – dude, you know what the most – I'm really jumping ahead here. One of the most rewarding <laughs> things for me getting better with my endurance was getting on a track. I used to look at a mile. Like, dude, we would have – we would run a mile in high school. And I would have like – I, dude, I in gym class, I would dominate like – Own people in kickball, own people in dodgeball. We play badminton. I crush everybody. We play racquetball. I crush everybody. Basketball, not not great, but like a decent center. I could just bang around and 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 score. Volleyball, I'm pretty good at. Dude, we would get on the track, and I would literally have panic attacks because of how hard a mile was for me. Like like brutally hard. And now I can I can go on a track, and I'm like, a mile is not hard. Like it's so easy now. And I see how small the track is relative to what I used to think it was. Yeah. Have you tried to run a mile fast yet? No, I have not. But I, you know, I, I, on uh, Saturday, ironically, so Saturday morning, I went and ran on a track. Nikki Hiltz, who actually won the 1500, was at the track uh, where I was training. She won the 1500 in the U.S. She actually upset a thing, Mo. Did you tell her you were going to race her? No, I didn't. Oh. I mean, she's also like 5'3 and. I just felt like if I said anything, I would be intimidating her. That would have um, been funny. Yeah. Hey, you want to race? <laughs> <laughs> I'll run one lap if you run three. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it it it's even when I'm not running hard, I can get on a track and run. You know, this is this would be if I'm in like a seven or eight mile run, I can still run like a nine minute mile pace and do that for three miles and not have any detriment to my performance. So I feel like. I mean, I know it's not amazing, but it's definitely easier than it used to be. It's way better for like old Dane. Yeah, or way better. Younger Dane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, younger Dane who looked older. Like that's what's that's what I think is wild. I heard a rumor that someone saw you in the um, when you were traveling, and said you're bigger in person than you look on. That happened twice. So twice uh, when I was in I Colorado only heard once about in the group vox colorado springs and i have the i have a witness here russell bowman if you're watching you better comment and support me one of the there was a guy from las vegas who's who back squatted like 230 in the training hall sunday of that's kilos right yeah of uh the weightlifting nationals and he came up and he's like yo dane i just i want to meet you um i want you to know you're way bigger in person than you are online (laughs) i was like oh man that makes me feel good and then yesterday in the dallas airport I was standing, I was just standing there like zoned out. I had done all that work, you know, what we had talked about. Uh, and this kid's walking past and like stops right in front of me. And he's like, you're the garage strength guy. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's me. And he's like, you're way bigger in person than you are, <laughs> than you are online. I'm like, really? Like, do people not think I'm taller or something? I mean, I'm not that tall, but I'm taller, I guess. So I did feel better about my. You are over six feet tall. Yeah, I felt better about my consciousness of running and losing weight and getting smaller, and still being told you're big. Yeah, that makes me feel a lot better. Good. I'm happy for you, <laughs> yeah. man. I'm glad you still isn't got it, that. Isn't it funny too? I'm 39, and I still like when people say that to me. That you're big. Yeah, like yo, you're pretty big. I'm like, yeah. Thank that's you. That's the that's the innate reason i started to lift weights when i was like 12 years old you wanted people to call you big yeah i just wanted to be like to stand out nice. i know that it sort of sounds pathetic but i don't care whatever makes you happy at it's least your I world know that's what makes me happy yeah <laughs> it's your world living it like <laughs> embrace it yeah yeah accept it 
not hurting anyone. Dane's like, hey, I want to get bigger muscles. Anyone mind? No, go right ahead. Dude. <laughs> yeah, like, just do that. <laughs> yeah. Do do your breathing top. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do it. How do you do like? Yeah. It's like an elephant. Yeah. Uh, just, We're getting a lot of comments on the breath. Oh yeah. Which is I did not expect that. So when I watch them to like comment on them, I look for moments like that now. That's good. Yeah. I, the one the other day I was I even put a comment I was like do something with this you're on the leg press, and you like stare like into the camera and do it. It's cranking, yeah, yeah, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful. All right, let's talk about cardio. Um, Dane, there's a rumor that you did a five minute assault bike test. How'd that go? Yeah, where's that video at? When does that go out? Dude, that was another that was another video that and I know Earl's gonna say he beat me in this five minute test. I'm waiting for him to yeah, just Yeah, but I'm like forever ago. I'm not you're way ahead of me right now. So the the I think the cool part about tests like that is that you just it immediately raises your intensity level out of training mode to like I'm getting tested now, I need to perform well, a bit better. Real simple for the goal. If you can hit 21 cows in the first minute which yeah. is the hardest, the hardest one. one yeah and just hang on yep you're good because it will tell you like if you hit 21 in the first minute it'd be like all right my rpms just have to stay right here and i'm good yeah you could even drop maybe one rpm yeah and you'll be fine because it's the first minute where you get behind yeah the first three it's like cows the, take longer yeah so it's like the for for us it was jason was filming and we had done, I forget what, I actually think I had even run that morning. And then I went on and I did 98, I think it was, something like that, 98 calories. Yeah, it was like 98.4 calories on the assault bike over six over five minutes. And I think that I I was pretty pleased with that because it's a, dude, that's a tough freaking test. Yeah. But it's I also think that that test and the 30-minute test are very, very good as far as like where are you uh, in your – general health and then how can you make progress you know moving forward off of that as well yeah you inspired me to start doing cardio oh that's multiple good. times again that's but good. i started doing one that's more like that in higher intensity instead of just because before i was just running and just be like i'm not in a hurry yeah i'm gonna do it for an hour and if I feel like walking, I'll walk. Right. I usually don't have to, but like if I feel like it, I'll you do will, it. Yeah. And I'm not racing against anything. When it hits an hour, I'm stopping and I'm walking back to my house. Yeah, yeah. Like that was just my mindset with my cardio. And I was like, you know what? I probably need something a little bit more intense here and there. I think that's okay, though, too, because there is a lot of evidence around. D dude, so I was breaking down. I was spending a lot of time studying distance runners when I was in Eugene because I have I have a pretty a pretty specific infatuation with what they do. And you know the the decathlon was finishing up Friday and so I was sort of prepping for I call Sam Black so he got 7th I think at at Nationals. I call his lap. What does Sam's your decathlete, right? Yeah, yeah. So they finished the the meet of the decathlon. The tenth event is the fifteen hundred, and it's insane that that's the tenth event because it's brutal. It's absolutely horrific. Now it only lasts about four and a half minutes to five minutes, but like, it's really, really brutal. Um, but I'll call his splits, and it's basically if he can maintain eighteen second one hundreds, he's going to run a good a, a the substantial fifteen. Um, so I. In prep for that, I was just like looking up uh, Jakob Ingerbritsen. He's like the number one guy in the world right now. He just broke the two mile world record from Norway. And I was looking at his training, and he talks about his training quite a bit. But every single, every other day, he wakes up in the morning and he'll do a 10K. Okay. Then at night, he does a 10K. So it's basically uh, like six miles, about yeah. six miles in the morning, six miles at night. Then the next day, he'll do some type of speed work. And then the next day, he does six miles in the morning, six miles at night. Then the next day, so another type of threshold training. So like hill sprints or um, speed work on the track or anything along those lines. 
But the, the interesting part becomes going back to what you were just discussing is that he's doing that, that baseline work that he calls it. His baseline work is just running those six miles in the morning, six miles Which at night. Which is the fancy way for his zone two. Yeah, it's literally or his. Or not fancy. Zone yeah. two is the fancy way for what he's doing. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's probably where you're at. And you're like you might even creep out of it a, a, a little bit and then go back into it and then get out of it a little bit. And I think that that's... The zone two work for me, where your heart rate is, I want to say it, it won't go above like 142 beats per minute. It would be like between, I want to say it is between 120 and 142. To me, that, that work, that zone two work for a distance runner is similar to technique work for a weightlifter or technique work for a thrower. And I think that when you look at it through that lens or even specific work, you know, field work for a football player, um, flow work for a wrestler when you look at it through that lens it makes more sense yeah the mitochondrial volume yeah exactly too, right? like, All the, yeah the molecular stuff going on right uh i have a silly aside question around like that heart rate stuff when i do hot yoga my heart starts thumping yeah at you're times. going yeah and i'm i'm positive i'm above a zone two it gets going yeah, yeah. that hard at times yeah. but if i do that Hot for yoga that, for sure you would for be. that hour and I'm because I could have a conversation in most of the time. Yeah, am I getting that cardiovascular like that mitochondrial response then there's, too? The, or no? Yes. Yeah. There, there, there's a there's a fairly. I mainly ask this for how I how much more I feel I need to do of like the zone two stuff. There's a fairly there's large part of me like all right I I don't have to do it as often because I'm doing some yoga. No, there's a decent breadth of research that there's a very positive cardio impact on uh on your body from in from uh any type of hot yoga sauna work i would say those two things specifically so i'm killing two birds and one stone almost. yeah yeah and i've i've you know Rhonda patrick does talk about that quite a bit actually lane norton just had a little a little piece on that now one thing that i've would want to see in the research would be like because i've sort of experimented with this where i'll go for let's say i go for a long run and then i come in and i'll sit in the sauna for 30 minutes is that an extended period of my long run or also if i'm doing you know with endurance work but in zone five let's say i'm doing one minute on one minute off one minute on one minute off and i do that for 25 minutes that would be more of like that that threshold work that that Inger Britson does on his off days, on his other days. But then I go b get in the sauna for that thirty minutes. Is that is that considered? Yeah, Am I getting the volume here and the respiration here? And I think that that's something that it's come a on unique science. Let us know. Yeah, it would be a unique study that that could be. The other thing with a sauna is that it doesn't beat you up. Like you're not right. You're not taking joint pressure or you know, or you're not handling ground reaction forces that you yeah. are when you're on on the road no. or the track. It's so intriguing. I was just was curious about that, you know, all the fun stuff, all the good stuff. I think the wild part with distance or with endurance work, even being on a rower or a bike or an assault bike, you know, fan bike, whatever you want to call it, is that in theory, and Jack Daniels, not the – not the whiskey, but the, there's the an running. actual the run. Yeah, there's a running coach from you know he's pretty old now, but he had a pretty His book's pretty good too. Yeah, like a very good intro uh, on on distance running. He would study a lot of different types of training and what it can do for VO2 max, and then he would even back. This is like back in the 80s where he would actually have guys running with a mask while he would be driving the car around to try and get their readings for their VO2 max while they're running. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so like he was like doing really cool research uh, way ahead of his time. I think he was at Cortland state. Um, but it's interesting to see, you can figure out like the best way to optimize endurance and the best way to make your cardio improve based off of your, your specific scenario for your sport. But the hard part is, is like, dude, it's hard. Like, yeah, it's really, really hard. And you can do this research and then be like, all right, who's going to volunteer to do this? <laughs> yeah. Who wants to actually go run like 400 meter hill sprints and do that like six times? And then we'll take your blood and see what your your lactate level are. I think I'd be are. OK with running the sprints 
the blood work would be like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore because I'm that type of baby. Oh, okay. I don't <laughs> mind the blood work as much. Oh, I hate the blood work. But like Inger Britson and his brothers, they actually do blood work like while they're in their training, while yeah. they're doing their repeat Savages. Work. Yeah, because they want to see, oh, oh, my lactate levels are still low. I'll, I can go a couple more sets. It's like, <laughs> what? Next level. And what's crazy is he got beat last year at the World Championships by a British guy um, in the 15. And that dude by all accounts has figured out you know his own version of what Inger Britson was doing but he's doing it like a, a modified and their argument is like Inger Britson does double double threshold I think it's called and uh, I think his name's Wakeman from Britain is doing this triple threshold that he came up with or he um, just added a threshold yeah supposedly and he's look taking, how great I am well he's I added one to two he's taking out I think he took out one of the long runs Oh. And factor that in for more speed work because Ingrid Britson can hold such a high speed level, but he doesn't have as good of a kick. And so the interesting part then is like, I will outkick you, donkey. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The crazy part, though, is these guys are doing this research on themselves and then pushing themselves to these limits that are just like. Once again, another argument for it's more a mental game than it is a physical game it's, yeah and then you <laughs> see, what else is crazy is you see what they're doing on social media yeah. and you know it's like you immediately because of social media have this guy who's basically your your next door neighbor training because you can see him on instagram yeah. and that holds you more accountable hey, what's up buddy yeah. how's it going over there right oh I, watch what i just did yeah off we go yep dane i want to go back to the the bikes mm -hmm. five minutes you said you got 98 Point yeah. four. Yeah. Um, what's the highest watts you can get it to in like under ten seconds? I'd have to watch that Phil DeRue video, but I want to say it was like would sixteen hundred be high? That sounds really low for you because okay. I, I got it up over eighteen yesterday. Okay, so maybe it was closer <laughs> to two. All right. I would have to see. I, I I don't pay attention to that as well as I should. You need like eight seconds to do it, and if you hold it any longer than that, you probably like. Yeah. I I'll, I could test that, um, and then I want to I want to give you another challenge since you like some of these weird ones. Yeah, do a minute on the bike, holding like seventy five RPMs, and then do I call them like high heel goblet squats. Oh, that would be fifteen reps, but unbroken. Oh God! And then rest like a two to one. That would be brutal. So like, take four minutes, do it like three times. Oh, so that it would be, dude. I don't know if my quads can handle that. Wimp. <laughs> you know what's one thing I did want to bring up? The my knees haven't been bad from running, but when I ride on the bike for more than thirty minutes on the assault bike, I do notice you that. Feeling in your knees? Yeah, it's just like creaky, not bad, but just more fatigue. You should try that though for me. And I would me. do that. Yeah, I would do that. I think you would love it. Yeah, just the the pump is unreal. I I, I would definitely do that. Talk though, since we're on the bike, about the one twelve. The 112 cow guy. The, oh, in uh Yeah, because you sent me a, a screenshot. I'm like, that was you? You were like, no. No, that was... Uh, okay, so that was a wrestler. Yeah. And it basically... And this is where it gets interesting because if you look at endurance training outside the realm... And this is a D1 athlete, too. Yeah. Well, no, it was a coach. Oh, it was, a co it was one of the coaches. Now, oh. he's only like 29, 30. But he was never even an All-American. What's wild should have been a CrossFit athlete. Yeah. What, what's <laughs> wild is like looking at that number. So in five minutes, he hit 112. And I think he said he maintained like 74 or 75 the whole time. Whoa. So now he also has been training on our program for over a year now. Um, but still, that like that's impressive. Like, and that's what's crazy with, with sports like wrestling and swimming is like they have their skill work that they have to do and then they have their strength work and then they have their actual endurance work and it's like the fact that he could hold that yeah. for five minutes like dude in my mind i don't think many wrestlers would need to hit more than 95 to 100 calories i i, I think if they could do that in five minutes their endurance would be oh yeah perfect for for a competition. you're good to go for six minutes yeah easily and, and i would even argue they would be good to go for multiple matches in a day yeah you know, because if they have that that baseline at 100 calories, they're also likely able to hit that repeat probably within 80 percent of that on a regular basis. So I think that that's like the one big part behind an assault bike is like one, it, the blueprint is of the piece of equipment is very small, but it's also easy 
if you're in a wrestling room or if you're if you are a swimmer and you need to get some extra work in, you can do it easily. Yeah, the bike's fun. Yeah, turn it up. Yeah, and it. Have you ever used one of the erg bikes, like a concept two or like bike erg, like the one with your hands? Yeah, it yeah. looks more like a road bike. I've played around with them. Yeah. Uh, what's your thoughts on that and ergs in general, like rowers? ski erg any of that stuff like i think they're all from a like a, a cardio standpoint yeah i think they're good i think i'd like rowers i actually do what i like about the rower is like i feel like you get a mobility workout while you're doing it because you bring your hips in so Where? far through your hips or yeah through? yeah in your lower back i have very mobile hips yeah I, I i love the rower i think it's i think it's a great tool for for cardio i still think the assault bike's probably a little bit worse like um, feeling right like yeah overall the skier is fine. I, I think it can I feel like be. It's, you brought this up about skiers, by the way. I kind of disagree with you, though, with like the bike could be worse. I think they both like if you go ham on a rower, like it sucks. Like you fall off. Yeah. And if and you go dead. ham for a long period, like some of these CrossFit tests will be like 45 minutes on this on the rower. See how many calories you can get. And you are racing other people like, dude, that's so horrible. when I was trying like to do, do CrossFit, I was never that good at it. But I got to the point I could do a sub 315 1K. I think I did okay. like a 311. I was just trying to think about my best 500. And able to clean 300 pounds within five minutes. Yeah, that's good. Like, and that's nothing compared to like. Well, the best guys, like the Matt best Frazier. And, yeah. and now to go back to the discussion on, uh, and this is where people devalue that long, slow distance work. Matt Frazier spent like two years basically rowing every single morning. Like he would get on the rower for 30 minutes a day because his endurance was so poor. And I think that that's something that I've personally discounted as a strength coach is that in the past I have said, well, within eight weeks you can get up to like. Well, your, you can for like your VO2 max. You can, but. And like improve that quicker. But handling more and more and more volume and being able to do it repetitively and also doing an endurance movement and it having a negative and, and it having no negative impact on your power output. That's where that long distance work over a very long period of time, six to eight months will pay off. So it's like Matt Frazier would, would say like, I have to do this so that I can hit a 350 pound clean after 35 minutes of doing of doing endurance work. Whereas if he in in his weaker points of his career, he would do th you know 30 minutes of endurance work and he would only be able to clean let's say 275 in pounds. So it's like I think and that he didn't need much strength work coming from right because he was so background. based yeah based off of what his background is. So I think that as coaches as strength coaches, we can't discount the endurance aspect that is seen in so many different sports and what it can do for you know certain people like and, and even looking at a sport like tennis like a lot of errors can happen when you're breaking down aerobically a yeah. lot of errors because now your head starts to go too when you're breaking down aerobically you're not just breaking down like i can't push this any further you're like your faculties are literally breaking down. yeah it's fun to see people I shouldn't say it's fun. It's yeah, it's fun. It's yeah. funny to watch someone like aerobically like tax themselves, and then it's like go do this. Yeah, go go solve a Rubik's cube, and like or even just like hey, deadlift that. Yeah, weight. like something that's not as complex as a clean, and it's like I I, I can't like yeah, I, can't, I don't know what to do. I can't recruit my muscles anymore. My like neural drive is completely like wiped. And, and going back to the fifteen hundred discussion with with the decathlon is like, oh yeah, this you know. <laughs> going full circle is like that's how decathletes feel for like the day after their their comps over is like they can't even they can't function like they not to get too gross but like they'll go eat a cheeseburger and then they think they're gonna fart and something else happens and it's <laughs> yeah. like because they are so destroyed by the 15 but also just through all those events and I can only assume, I can only imagine that's what's happening with the CrossFitters when the CrossFit games are over. Yeah, what is that? Four days, three days. Yeah, that's the other thing. The fact that it's four days, it's like, come on, what is? What are you guys doing? It's like fifteen events, fourteen, yeah. something like that. Yeah, it's crazy. Are you? Are we still going to make up a new decathlon one of these days and have it at the Garage Strength Games <laughs> or the, the Power Fest? Like a like our own version. Yeah, that would be fun. Like, I don't think it'd be worth it though. No, nah, why not? <laughs> It's it's bench press, dumbbell bench press, dips, 
pull-ups. I disagree with this. <laughs> Deadlift. Every lift that I'm good at. How many pull-ups can you do? Probably close to 20. Probably, actually, probably over 20. You got to test. I bet you do them neutral grip, well, though, I too, did don't 17 you? when I was with Trevor Woolwine was lifting with me, and Russell, I did 17. Neutral grip, I bet, too. Yeah. 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 That's kind of like cheating. It is cheating a little. Yeah. But still a pull-up. I hate I don't have a neutral grip at home, though. Yeah, I, I love them. I just want, I need another way to vary things for myself. Are, you're like a goldfish. You don't have an attention span. No, it's just curl ups, pull ups. Like it's like, all right, maybe I'll go wide. Maybe I'll go yeah. real close. It just put a towel over it. I'm getting there. Yeah. I'm getting there. Give it time, dude. Give it time. All right. So we talked about five minutes on the bike, but really we want to talk about thirty minutes on the bike and this crazy thing. You have like this RPM thing you believe people should be able to do to like be like really test yourself and i believe it was around like can you hold 58 rpms for 30 minutes straight and sort of roll between 55 and 58 yeah i think and that's, then test it around 63 plus yeah i think that you should be if you are interested in general health you should be capable of holding that for 30 straight minutes I want to see. I'm going to call it Jason. I want to see if Jason could do that for 30 minutes, 58 RPMs. No, I bet he can't. So I think he should be able to. That should be a prerequisite to work at Garage. I, I think there's a number that should relate to based off size. But and 55, too. I think 55 could be potential. Yeah. Jason's going to do a five minute test. So I think for 30 minutes, if you can hold 63, so the number for that is getting over 12 miles in 30 minutes. That's another thing where there's a lot of mental games because you start to play games around like 17, 18, 19 minutes and you start to like doubt everything. Then once you get to like 23, 24 minutes, you're like, I'm on. Yeah, it's downhill. Yeah. So it's like that's a quarter to go. Yeah. That's where I think that that's what those are the tests I like. Those where, two, where you I, have to, because I also think they complement they complement each other very well. Man, it's a lot of pushing. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot, a lot of pushing. But I, I do think fifty five to fifty eight RPMs for thirty minutes is a very good baseline for just general health. Like if you want heart health, that's probably where you should be. I, I, I want to test that number on a bike around size and weight too, because I think because of the fan. And like the wattage, it, the resistance, like it always gives back what you put in. So like it's easier for someone larger and stronger to hold that. To hold that if they have a good endurance. They also have more muscle though that has to be fed yeah. with oxygen. No wobble there. <laughs> well, that there is. <laughs> well, still wobble, yeah, but minimal. Yeah. I just I want to play with that number. Is the thing is my thought. You ready for some over under? Yeah, let's go. I got one of these. I got to move. Yeah. All right, 10K run, overrated, underrated. Underrated, dude. Underrated. I think the 10K run, for me, was the most Im- like imposing thing that I was like, no, that's stupid. But it was stupid to me because I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it at all. Whereas now it's like that that 10K run is like, that's my freaking money run. Yeah. Like It's like, yo, you go out and you can run a 10K. If you can run a 10K, you're in good shape. You it's 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 not that hard once you, you weren't back shape. on the bike in six months. What do you mean? Uh, I was just throwing something out there. Don't worry about. Uh, it. <laughs> I mean, I do like the bike, but yeah. oh, I know what yeah. you were doing. Okay, yeah. It was, um, no, I wasn't Earl. <laughs> all right. I know. Um, oh, I got some stories for you. Here we go. Overrated, <laughs> underrated. Man, that took me a while to pick up on. Yeah. Uh, ski, bike, and row ergs. And I personally, I'll say it after you go, overrated, underrated. I think the ski bike would be overrated. I think the rower is underrated. All right. I'm not a fan of the ski because it's so much of like your head bobbing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you use your lower back. And like I've already tried doing like a 10K on it and it's like it becomes a lot. Right. From like just like. Dizziness. Yeah. Yeah. it's like your head banging. And I don't think it would be effective as like just like a lat and tricep pull down workout all the time. Yeah. Maybe I would need to like squat more to do it. Right. I, I think the thing with a rower, I remember Brian Shaw did like a a, a 500 meter row. Yeah, like a minute 10. Yeah. Minute I think eight. it was, I think it might have even been faster than that. Yeah. My only thing when he did that 
was what would Brian Shaw do at 30 minutes? Like, that's what I would want to see. Yeah. And I think it would actually have carryover to a sport. So, like, that's 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 what I think can be the underrated part. And I got to use one of those bike ergs once, and I actually loved it because what I found was it was hard to get it going, but once you were there... You can it, roll. You just roll because it doesn't get, like, the wind doesn't resist. Like, the erg's just going now. Yeah, yeah. But if you don't keep going, like, it... It feels it right away and will come back on right, you. Right, right. I don't know. I liked the bike one. I actually think I liked it more because it felt like actually riding a bike on flat surface. Okay. Where the assault bike feels like I'm always going up a hill. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which I like too. But all right. Uh these are all like sort of cardio related. Functional fitness, or as most people call it, crossfit. Couplets, triplets, or chippers, overrated, underrated. So a couplet would be like two wrong. movement. So like yeah. think like something real typical, like uh, thrusters, pull ups, like burpees, deadlifts. I think I, I would argue, and would, a triplet would be like you know go run, come back, do kettlebell swings, do pull ups, something like that. I I think for CrossFitters that it's necessary. It's their tests. That's in their their training. It's the sport. Yeah. So more general pop then. I think they're fun. Fitness. I think they're fun to do. And I think they're, again, I would use them as a test. I think I would hesitate. You know, again, I, I mentioned I'd do a long run and then I might go on the assault bike and do like sprint work or I might do a long run and then do like easy strength training. I just think like it's sometimes like it, it, it can just be a bit much that, that you can't really get good at one or the other. Sounds like you'd be willing to do it once a week. Yeah, yeah, I, yes. That that would be a very fair analysis. And it'd take like seven minutes, 12 minutes of your time, and you'd be like, all right, no, I'm done I with I feel this. good. Yeah. yeah. I do think there's also points to a workout like that where you're like, man, I only got 20 minutes. I'm going to do something like this. Yeah. I'm going to do a salt bike for, you know, I'm going to get the salt bike, 50 calories, go on the rower, 500 meters. I got to push, pull a sled for 10 lengths, and then I got to do 25 jump lunges on each leg. Oh, man. I think that's no deadlifts there. I would probably put yeah three fifteen deadlifts for ten, for ten. Yeah, so much fun. <laughs> three fifteen so heavy to the general pop <laughs> CrossFit. Okay, four oh five. <laughs> <laughs> You're goof. All right, audience questions. The name is redacted, so I know who this is online, right? Because it's Discord. It's funny. All right, hey Dane, I've been doing peak strength three months. I just started my second 14-ish week program. I chose intermediate level lifting for basketball, but I've been doing stuff like squats for years, just not Olympic lifts. What I'm asking is if there is some type of timeline or checkmark lift for qualities or skills that I'm focusing on based on my information. I searched on the app and your website, but couldn't find anything because I noticed in my second program there are eccentric work and stuff like depth drops and all new exercises or variations as well. I think... The way I heard that question was, how can I check to see that I'm making progress in my Olympic lifts from a technique standpoint? Uh, I would just, I would post it in Discord or I would join our Facebook group, but probably Discord. I would probably just say in Discord. Um, so post your lifts. Or tag us on Instagram. And, and yeah. you know, I can, I still comment on a decent amount of people's stuff on Instagram. Instagram. But I think it, it would, it would be stay in the community on Discord and, and see about that. Yeah. Post your O lifts in there. Yeah. I should post my two most recent ones. Yeah, you should. I, I think that would be. I, I haven't just, I have them on my phone and I don't, I only use Discord on my computer. I haven't. I think that'd be awesome. I should put my, my 300 pound clean from a block and yeah. what else? Oh, the, the 102 that after my fifth time snatching in like three years, two yeah, years. I, I think people would love that. Yeah. Laugh at me. Jake one up me when I showed him the video. He's like, hey, I just snatched for the second time, and he power snatched 100 kilos. Oh, shit. I was like, Wayne, uh, I was like 67. Yeah. Is he even that much now? I don't know. He probably stopped eating. He's probably like a 61. <laughs> probably. All right. This one's from Reddit. Marlo1017. Can I get the same benefit, benefits from a hand clean as a full power clean off the ground? The same benefits, I I would say, slightly different, but, but you're gonna have like the same general benefit, except for I actually like the hand clean better because of the eccentric lowering for strengthening your hamstrings, your lower back, and then I like be coming out of that turnaround to keep that lower back tight, 
uh, and and you have a shorter range of motion. I think they're both fantastic lifts. You can get the same benefits per se, but I actually think in a lot of cases you you might get a better benefit from a low hang clean. Yeah, I like low hang clean. I think that the other thing is too is like we use all these variations inside of peak strength. So it's like if we're doing like a leg power day, depending upon where we're at in training and, and where we're trying to get you, that it's going to select one of those movements earlier versus one of those movements later based off the progression that we have set and, and how to get you to that, that better point inside of this specific program, specific to you, whatever your athlete so, choice is. Little Earl story here. I purposefully have worse technique when I power clean because I know I can just bang Frank. off my hip yeah. so hard because when I catch it, if it's a little far forward, it doesn't it's not that heavy. mess things up as much Yeah, because I'm so much higher. So I will bang. Whereas with a low hand clean, you're going to be more dialed in. Yeah. yeah. I have to like actually like technically do it. Power clean, I'm just like, I'm going to rip it. And, and I go. have an arm bend too. I'm going to row it into my hip so hard <laughs> and just like probably bruise myself. Like if I'm going for it right i think that's where it is just pay attention to i i I think the low hand clean is one of the best technical teachers as well cool Uh, that's most around cardio we kind of just got into silliness one of the best cardio things for weightlifters is to hit two sets of five in under a minute of a low hand clean try that out today i hated when you would program that you used to it would be like all right four sets has to be done under 40 seconds i was just like geez like you're like sprinting through it. And yeah, you got to rush it. And then you you have to be more dialed in with your technique. Yeah. And you catch that fourth one and you just like bottom out. And you're like, <laughs> let me bounce it and stand it up. So try all that. Head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store. Download Peak Strength today. We just updated the entire system. Now we have a sports performance realm. Or if you're in general fitness, you can get into the athletic fitness You can go through the athletic fitness journey to help you achieve your goals to becoming a freak. Until next time, peace.